Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. Earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Here's Bob and Sherry. Welcome to Bob and Sherry. It's like heat. It's like a punch in the face. Feeling hot, hot, hot. It's hot, hot, hot. Getting oh, hot in here. It's getting hot in here. This heat is unbearable. It's hot out here. It's hot. It's like it's hot. Unbearable. How hot is it? Unbearable. How hot is it? Unbearable. Jeez. Huh? It's hot out here. My, but it's hot. Things are starting to get hot. Pretty hot, isn't it? Yes, it's hot. Really hot. From the Bob and Sherry Studios, the very hot Bob and Sherry. We on the Bob and Sherry Show are going to start off by talking about the news that is surrounding the one and only Britney Spears. I'm just going to read this right out of the Los Angeles Times. Britney Spears wants out of her 13-year conservatorship. Quote, I'm so angry, it's insane. Unquote. Addressing the court for the first time in two years, Brittany was candid and emotional at her hearing several days ago. Brittany has finally confirmed what many fans have long suspected. She wants out. She wants out of the conservatorship, out of her care appointments as currently structured, out of paying the people, presumably uh, including her father, who tell her no all the time. Quote, I truly believe conservatorship is abusive, she said. I want to end it. And it goes on and on. Um, We were talking about it just before uh, airtime here. And I mentioned that I don't think it's black and white. Uh, His, uh, her rather, agent, manager, who uh, handles all the bookings and everything, uh, had a quote. She said that, she was ready to do a Vegas show. She didn't want to, but she said, not only was I good during the rehearsals, I was great. And I taught 16 dancers exactly what to do. The manager said she was not great. She was not ready to perform. So there's the black and white. You really don't know. And of course her father's power, you know, is uh, over all of this. Some people thought that he saved her life. Other people thought that he's a leech. It's really, really hard to tell. The judge in the in the case said that uh, he was very, um, I guess it was a, a woman, she was very uh, impressed that Brittany stood up for herself. She's not making any kind of a decision or anything at that moment, but she said she was very impressed that she was taking it into her own hands. Uh, evidently, Brittany was given uh, lithium at one point. She said she felt drunk all day. Um, She's very, she's very unhappy right now. She is just not happy. And when they told her that uh, she would not be doing Vegas, she said that was like a giant uh, burden lifted off of her shoulders. So I don't know Let what me. to say. You, you, the, one of the most bizarre things is the courtroom. She, she was not in the courtroom. She was uh, via Skype or something. And Audio so language. were her parents. Yeah, yeah uh, nobody was in the courtroom. The courtroom was packed to the point they had to open up two other courtrooms just for spectators. And I'm not even talking about the the uh, the Britney people in pink shirts outside with the signs that say "Free Britney." I, those those people just I, I just don't understand them. But anyway, um, that's where we stand. What do you think? So so let me. Um, I have Britney's statement that she gave to the court in front of me. And she said a couple of things that were really powerful. She said that in California, I'll read directly from it, quote, in California, the only thing similar to this is called sex trafficking, making anyone work against their will, taking all their possessions away, credit card, cash, phone, passport. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't think the state of California can have all this written in the court documents from the time I showed up and do absolutely nothing. Um, she said, my dad and everyone else who has played a key role in my conservatorship should be in jail. They have way too much control. I don't drink alcohol, but I should, considering what they've put my heart through. My father made me feel like death, like death with the depth of what he did to me. I want this. Cons- I d- want to end this conservatorship. I don't want to be evaluated. I've had enough. It's embarrassing and humiliating. And she went on to say that she just wants her life back. It's been 13 years. She wants to marry her boyfriend and get pregnant and have a baby, but they won't allow it. They put they forced an IUD and they won't allow her to remove it. Um, And she said, what state allows people to say you can't spend your money unless you do as we say? 
Um, I should not be in a conservatorship like this if I can work and provide for myself and provide for other people. And then she said to the judge, quote, I wish I could stay on the phone to you forever because when I go off the phone, the no's will start again. No, 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 no. It's really heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. I tell you, that that thing about the forced IUD, that I couldn't believe that. I mean, I'm not so sure. I, I have nothing to do with her life, but I don't know right now if it's a good thing for her to have a baby with a boyfriend. But that that sounded like something out of the Nazi past. I don't I don't think anyone knows or can say with certainty what is happening with Brittany. Um, is it clear that there have been some mental and emotional health struggles? Absolutely. But at what point any of us can go through that? Many of us are going through that right now. And our freedoms have not been snatched away from us. She's being treated like the golden freaking goose who's kept in a very small pen so that the eggs keep coming. Does Brittany need some support and financial management? Maybe. But does she need to be essentially a prisoner of her own fame and fortune? That Something, something about this feels completely and totally off. Agree or disagree? You hope, you hope the uh, – I agree. Uh, you, you would hope that the judge – is going to look at this and say, okay, this does not work. What's going on right now does not work. But I don't feel, and I think that she's intimated that, that Brittany uh, needs to have therapy. She has, she's come out and said that. Um, I, maybe a, a new plan, uh, a, a, a new medical team, a new, a new management, something that will take her needs into consideration. And yet, You know, just as a casual observer, you have to say, I don't know if you can just let her run free for her own good. You know, but let me just say, if Britney Spears didn't have, if she wasn't sitting on a pile of money that a ton of people were dependent on, she'd be running free. Yeah, that's true. There, There are a lot of us walking around the world right now who need real help and guidance and support. And we're not worth anything to anybody. And so we don't get it. This idea that Britney's freedoms and liberties should somehow be curtailed, it's in defense. I think it's indefensible. It's absolutely indefensible. If the girl was poor, good luck, right? Good luck to you, Britney. Mm-hmm. This, there's something so gross and weird and wrong here. Yeah, I know. But I, I do, does Britney I, I do need th- some help? Yeah, she, she, she needs to have somebody who's looking after her, a, a new team, I think, because this one's not working. So, as they say, we will see. It's Bob and Sherry. Ways to get in touch with the Bob and Sherry Show. Stick your head out a window and yell, Hey, Bob and Sherry. Hey, Bob and Sherry! Get the Bob and Sherry free app for your phone and leave us a talkback message. Hey, Bob and Sherry. Email us through the Bob and Sherry website, bobandsherry.com, or email us hello at bobandsherry.com. Call or text us at 1-888-BOB-SHERRY. Hello, Bob and Sherry. Leave us a DM on the Bob and Sherry Facebook page, or you can just kick it old school and yell out the window. Hey, Bob and Sherry! Get Bob and Sherry swag in our store at bobandsherry.com. Every once in a while, you'll see something online and, and you say to yourself, that person is, is my soulmate. That person is my brother. I saw somebody just post this. How many exclamation points can I include in one work email before I sound deranged? <laughs> I totally get that. I mean, I, I am very pro exclamation points. I am. Um, as a person in real life, not so much. But when I write something out, like let me give you an example. Um, I am looking so forward to meeting the new IT people at the Friday five o'clock after work meeting. <laughs> if I if if you end that with a period, it's kind of like. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you say, I am so looking forward to meeting the new IT people at the five o'clock after work meeting on Friday, exclamation point. Oh, bo- look at Bob there. Bob's really into it. <laughs> and once in a while, you put a couple of them. I, I have sent out emails where and written stuff for blogs where there have been exclamation points like every third or fourth paragraph. And I look back at it sometimes and I say to myself, is that a bit on the feminine side? You know, does, does, does a man 
use exclamation points like that. I don't know. I, but it, I but it think, feels I, dreary otherwise. I don't think exclamation points are gendered. I mean, they're, I'm, I use them on purpose so that when you say something, it doesn't come off as... Um, if you if you were to say something, thanks thanks for the invitation. I hope I can make it. Period. That feels different from thanks for the invitation. I hope I can make it. Exclamation point. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah, but I don't think it's feminine. I think it's just you're. It's a way of conveying. Hey, don't. I don't mean this to come off as passive aggressive or unpleasant. I am super enthusiastic about whatever this plan is. Thank you the only so reason much. the the only reason I said feminine is um, I have a lot of uh, female friends and they use a lot of exclamation points. My wife does. I've got guy friends and they never use them in text messages. Oh my emails. god! The former president was getting paid by the exclamation point. He loved those. Things. Oh, he was. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. But that yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the king of them. But but all the guys that I know from high school that I get together with and my golf friends. Right now, if we communicate, I'm the only one using an exclamation point and nobody's using an emoji. But that's what you're a diff, you're different from your friends. You're completely mm -hmm. different. You are in a world where you understand how those kind of messages can can come. Yeah. Off. Yeah. And that's your friends true. are not your friends are not. It's true. So instead of going, wow, I'm different from my friends. There must be something wrong with me. You should look with pity on those men who don't understand that a well-placed exclamation point is like yeah. social KY. It yeah. gets the job done smoothly. You, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to send out a mass email today. Uh, clown emojis, exclamation points and, and put them in their place. And use as the subject header, social KY. Everyone will open it, I swear. <laughs> Boy, you're right about that. That's a promise that I can make yeah. to you. Right. Uh, you know, the only time I see an exclamation point used where I cringe is when, you know, I'll be like scrolling on my Facebook and someone will say, I'm really, I'm really sorry to say that mom lost her battle last night. And at 89 years young, she has gone to be with dad and the Lord. And someone underneath replies in the comments, I am so sorry for your loss, four exclamation points. And I know that they, the exclamation points in that context mean I'm really sorry for your loss. But it reads a little bit like we're at the it county does. fair pie contest. <laughs> That's the it it does. It totally does. I agree with you. That's the only time that I'm <laughs> troubled by that. Um, tell you what, we got more ones in the news coming up. And then uh, we must just touch briefly on the very mysterious and I don't think legit passing of a computer virus software tycoon, John McAfee who died mysteriously in a Spanish prison. There seems to be quite an epidemic of notorious incarcerated Americans dying that way. What's up with that? Got the People's Movie Critic with the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Comedian Adele Givens, a big old Friday show for you. It's Bob and Sherry. Morons in the News is sponsored by NHTSA. Bob and Sherry. You idiots. Here they are. He's a moron. He's acting like a complete idiot. Morons in the News. Uh, okay, we have a theme, at least with the morons in the news that I have today, and that theme is arson. Arson is very serious. If you're really mad at somebody, do not set their garage on fire. You can go to jail for a long time. A Punta Gorda woman is facing charges of arson. She set a laundry basket full of her own clothes on fire. Elizabeth Ooh. Lafleur, 30 years old, was arrested following an investigation into a fire that was set at a home on Grover Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. According to the documents, fire crews responded to reports of a house on fire, and they found the fire was started in a white plastic laundry basket full of clothing. A neighbor told fire crews Lafleur came to her home and admitted to setting her mother's house on fire. She was living with her mom. Neighbors told responders they rushed to douse the flames with water, dragged the smoldering clothes basket outside. These are good neighbors. Investigators said the clothes had been doused in lighter fluid and set on fire. She reportedly, the 30-year-old Miss Lafleur, she reportedly grabbed her mother's pet bird and ran into the woods when the fire crews arrived. Let me just say, bad, setting the uh, fire, good, saving the bird, stupid, running into the woods. This is not Hansel and Gretel time.
they will find you in the woods. They have helicopters. They will find you. She is going to court. Um, let the first person among us who hasn't seriously contemplated setting the laundry on fire raise their hand. Because I can't do it. I have thought so many times, you know what? I'm just going to set this on fire and I'm done with it all. I know. I know. (laughs) This woman is so relatable. Sister, I have your back. Let's go to today's morning of the day. Also out of Florida, this time Tampa. A Florida doctor who um, accidentally performed surgery on the wrong testicle for a patient um, has, has apologized and has been ordered to pay a fine. Now, I'm over here going, doctor, you just had the one job. There's not but two two of them. Nobody sharpied up the one that you were supposed to operate on. If Mm. you're the gentleman who who owns these two (laughs) things and the wrong (laughs) one got chopped, um, you're going to be really, really frustrated. So here's what happened. The um, the doctor. um, I think we already knew, don't we? Don't we already know what happened? (laughs) Marked the man's. He incorrectly (laughs) uh, sharpied (laughs) the wrong one. And was midway through the procedure when he said, mm. oh, gosh, it's I'm on the wrong one. So then he started working on the other one. And mm. the, the long and the short of it is, is that um, this treatment, mm. you know, there could be really negative side effects that would mm-hmm. make it hard for this patient to go forward. And now the doctor has to pay a $2,500 fine. Now, I'm not a dude, but I see how protective y'all are of those things. I feel like that fine's a little low. Seems low to me. Yeah, yeah. twenty five hundred bucks and an apology, you know, and 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 he's done. Yeah, I don't think so. That's one just of those little... things, though, that if it's you, man, okay, uh, they marked you, but don't you say just before it begins. Now, are you sure you know where you're going here? I mean, that's now in a related story, also in Florida. Let's go to Orlando, where a gentleman whose name is Shaft Bang Adams. Chef <laughs> Bang no, Adams. It's, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's a that's a seventies exploitation movie hero. Mr. Bang Adams was arrested for driving on a suspended license and booked into hmm. the uh, Orange County Jail on misdemeanor charges. And while he was there, I mean, he'd been he has a long rap sheet, right, for drug hmm. possession, firearms, all sorts of stuff. During the hmm. intake process. Um, corrections employees subjected Mr. Chef Bang Adams to a strip search. And while in process of doing the strip, sh- the strip search, they found that Mr. Chef Bang Adams had concealed four, four rocks of meth under the skin hmm. of his Chef Bang Adams. Wow. I want you to well, just we're talking take about it. Shaft. We talking about oh, Shaft. We talking about Shaft. I just want you to take a minute and imagine you it? the extreme discomfort that would be involved in inserting four rocks of crystal in, yeah. under the skin of that part of your body. Um, not needless to say, the uh, corrections officers were gobsmacked by what they found. They yeah. did a field test of the rocks, and sure enough, it was meth. So Mr. Chef Bang Adams was charged with possession of meth and contraband and all sorts of stuff. And his mugshot is the face of a man who just underwent a very painful procedure to hide his crystal in the skin of the thing. It is absolutely horrifying. Text the word moron to 888-262-7437. We'll send today's moron of the day to your phone, and you'll be registered to win a bottle of People Make Me Sick, the official hand sanitizer of the Bob and Sherry Show. Well, that was quite uh, a coupling of uh, morons you have for us there. Thank you. Hey, it's the weekend. I like to go out big. Got my attention. Coming up, we've got comedian Adele Givens. We have the People's Movie Critic with his review of The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. For your Friday, it's Bob and Sherry. Leaving a child in a hot car can lead to their death very quickly. If you see a child left unattended, call 911. If the child looks unresponsive, do what it takes to get him or her out safely. Paid for by NHTSA. Get the moron of the day sent right to your phone. Text moron to 888-BOB-SHARE, 262-7437. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this uh, very mysterious and bizarre John McAfee case. Anybody that uses a computer knows the name McAfee. This is the guy who created the antivirus software that's on everybody's computer, right? Mm -hmm. And he was wanted in the United States. He was facing 10 counts of tax evasion in Tennessee. 
and seven counts of fraud and money laundering conspiracy in New York. And were he to be tried and found guilty on all of those counts, he could have been looking at 100 years in jail. I mean, 30 years alone in the tax evasion case, 100 years for the fraud case. But he was in a prison in Spain and um, there were they were fighting over whether or not to extradite him back to the United States to face these charges. So he's in the mm-hmm. Spanish prison and he is announcing to everyone and his family is saying, John will never take his own life. John McAfee said, if you f- if I find if you find me dead of suicide, I was whacked. The government did this to me. I would never kill myself. I would never. I would never. It'll be another Jeffrey Epstein. Sure enough, um, the government in Spain and the U.S., they reach an agreement and they're going to extradite McAfee back to the U.S. to face six charges out of the total of 17. If he were convicted on those six charges, he was looking at 18 years in jail, but he could have appealed that. And chances are he would never have done any time. So right after the agreement is reached to bring him back to the U.S. to face those six charges, he's found dead allegedly of suicide in his jail cell. And his wife, his family, everyone is like, "Uh uh-uh, nope, didn't happen. And in fact, um, McAfee got a tattoo that said whacked and posted a picture of it on his Instagram and said, if I turn up as a suicide, I didn't take my own life. It's completely not going to happen. I'm never going to do that. And now here we are. He's been found dead allegedly by his own hand in his jail. So, so there was not another prisoner who, uh, you know, gave him the shiv or anything like that. It's no. they're saying it was suicide. They're saying he hanged himself. It's Jeffrey Epstein yeah. all over again. Yeah, D- yeah. His life has been so off the rails yeah. um, in the last few years. I mean, he was brought up in suspicion of this murder charge in Belize. And then yeah. he, he had, oh, uh, he was a uh, drunk driving charge in 2015, uh, this uh, weapons charges in 2012. I mean, he's had all kinds of craziness going on in his life. And in fact, I see here that he fabricated a hoax when he was arrested in Norway. And this is this past August after refusing to place a lace lace thong with a face mask on i guess it's a posted picture of himself on twitter with a bruised eye claiming it occurred during the rest however the photo of the alleged arrest shows the officer with the word for police on their uniform so it could not have been the arrest in norway he he said he it was a whole he he cooked up this whole story about how he'd been charged for not wearing a mask you know because of covid and by he was wearing his wife's thong instead. Yeah. So the picture that you saw uh, okay. that was on his Twitter was him sitting on the uh, steps of his private jet with a with a thong on his face instead of a face mask. The guy's a nut. I mean, he's a he's a wild card. I, I don't see how the thong he's would cover the both his nose and mouth, you know, so. It, but it did. <laughs> That's the thing about it. When you see the picture here, um, I, I think he Belize, killed. Him. I think he killed himself. In Belize, he fled Belize in 2012 uh, when he was named, as Max said, a person of interest in a murder. Police found him in Belize living with a 17-year-old girl and a huge arsenal of weapons. The guy is completely off the rails, totally out of control. A so nut. why should – if he's done all of this, here's here's why I think that he offed himself. If uh, he's done all these crazy things with the weapons, with the uh, 17-year-old girl and, and all of this, why would we take it – for granted that he was sane when he said, I'll never kill myself. What's what's the impetus for the Spanish police, somebody in that prison to uh, to kill the guy? I, I can't think of anything. I don't I see think, the United States sending in a hit squad to a Spanish prison. I don't think he killed himself. I think he's far too selfish and too much of a hedonist to take his own life. That's the point. I just don't I don't see it. I think I think it is Epstein all over again. And there are other things we don't have time to dive all into it here, but there's all sorts of other stuff around Bitcoin and crypto and you, you could you could do a series on him. I know that mm-hmm. they talk Showtime's doing a movie, but you could do an entire series on him. There's so many facets to this thing. Isn't and you don't it need funny? to exaggerate Everybody knows that name. Everybody knows that name and what what is it tied to? Security. And then he's he's the, that's the last guy you would think would end up like this. Somebody who's a, a genius at security, you know, he's just a nut. Yeah. I, if he had been extradited for all the counts and was facing 130 years, maybe. 
But something here just ain't right. It just ain't right. We got comedian Adele Givens straight ahead. And then the People's Movie Critic with the hitman's wife's bodyguard. It's Bob and Sherry. 47,238. That's how many photos are on my phone. I looked today, 47,238. All of those moments that were so special that I wanted to capture them and keep them forever are sitting in my phone, which is in my pocket. 47,238. Now that we're getting back out in the world again and we're having adventures and we're spending time together with the people we love, what are you doing to capture that moment? How many photos are sitting on your phone? Wouldn't it be great to make some of those moments physical so that the moment doesn't just get lost in your camera roll? Check out myphoto.com. It's awesome. It's easy to use. I just got my husband for Father's Day the most beautiful, glossy metal photo of his first grandchild. She's wearing her sunglasses and her cool pajamas. It came out. It, it was amazing. It took me about three minutes to figure out how to make it all happen at myphoto.com. The price was incredible. It got here like within a minute. And what a great gift. When he opened that package and saw that, his whole face lit up. My photo doesn't do photo books because they're really complicated to build and create if you've ever done that. And they can be kind of boring. You know, you're flipping through and, oh, there's another picture of Disneyland, right? My photo prints your image directly onto acrylic, glass, metal, and more. You've got to go to myphoto.com and check it out. There are a lot of things you can do with all those photos on your phone. But myphoto.com is going to give you an incredible, beautiful keepsake that's also really cool. This metal photo is amazing at a price you're not going to believe. Plus, we have a special discount. Go to myphoto.com and take 20% off your order. Use the code SHERRY. Your order will arrive in just five days, and I've lived it, so I can promise that. Prices start at just $12. So if you've looked at this sort of thing before, and then your eyes popped out of your head at the price, uh uh-uh, you were not at myphoto.com. Myphoto.com, price is starting at $12. Use the code SHERRY to get 20% off today, and you are going to love what you get. 47,238 photos on your phone. How many of them are worth making real in your world? Myphoto.com. Remember, use the promo code Sherry, get 20% off today. Let's get back to the show. Bob and Sherry sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. Earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Here's Bob and Sherry. All right, it's time for your Friday edition of Everyone Needs a Laugh, sponsored by Panera. Here is comedian Adele Givens. I want to share a little information with the ladies because a couple of them complimented me on my outfit today. And I just want to say it's not designer. I don't do the designer thing. I don't do that. Too much money for just somebody's name and my label. It just don't feel right to me. I think I got a thing they call common sense. And, you know, (laughs) it's kind of contagious. So I figured tonight I'll just explain a couple of things. Like this, you know, people talking about bling bling. See, this $23. Bling, bling like a mug, ain't it? (laughs) But don't hug me. I'll snag your mama with this bad boy, I'm telling you. (laughs) But I look good, and that's what's important. I don't like to buy designer clothes because the sales girls act too snotty, don't they, ladies? Don't, when you go in those stores, these (laughs) act like they better than you. Well, I'm the wrong one to act like that with. Many, many times I've informed them what their damn job was. You know, I go in there and she looking at me all snotty and I explain to her, hey, you sell stuff, okay? It's your job to price stuff for me, all right? Okay, I know I ain't buying nothing. (laughs) And you know I ain't buying nothing. But I want to know how much the I ain't buying (laughs) costs. This gotta be the worst designer purse. What kind of crap is that? It's a bag. That's all it. Use your common sense. It's the bag. And you wouldn't even have it if you didn't have to carry things out of the house that was necessary to take out when you leave. Am I right? They tell you the purse is $700. What you got in there? A cell phone, some keys, depending on which club you're going to, some liquor. <laughs> And that say a whole lot about you. You got a $700 person. You're going to sneak a half pint into the club, innit? You a smart sister. And I think it's epidemic, this designer thing, because now men are into designer clothes. Men didn't even used to care about how they look and dress. 
But now, from the west side of Chicago, where I'm from, a lot of guys wear alligator shoes, which I have no problem with. I didn't until I priced some of these shoes. I priced a pair of alligator shoes at $2,000. That's $1,000 a foot. $200 a toe, add it up. <laughs> if you're missing a toe or two, subtract where necessary. But I didn't think it was fair because I know some of these brothers and I know their children and it just ain't fair. Your kids look thirsty and you're walking around with alligators, $2,000 shoes, it ain't fair. I couldn't do it because I got rules for money. I would not buy a pair of $2,000 shoes. I can't, I'll tell you what, my rule is if I got on a pair of $2,000 shoes, I better not step in no dog doodle. <laughs> if I'm wearing some $2,000 shoes and I'm walking towards some dog doodle, those shoes better turn my ass around. <laughs> and take me in another damn direction. <laughs> and I found out since I've been in entertainment, the more money you make, the more they waste. That's right, because my friends love Rolex watches. Oh, they love them. I didn't even know what a Rolex was. I come from the west side of Chicago, pole broke. I know what time it is, time to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm trying not to think about the time we broke around here. My friend comes showing me his watch. He said, look at this watch. I said, ooh, that's so cute. He said, cute? What you mean cute? You know how much this damn watch costs? <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't say as I do. He said, $16,000. I said, you been sipping on some scissor? <laughs> what the hell made you pay $16,000 for a watch? And you, you know he tried to justify this purchase. He thought of telling me, see, this is a Rolex. Look at the second hand. See, the second hand on a Rolex, it glide. But the second hand on a regular watch, it jerk. I said, that's all you got? $16,000 all you can tell me is the second hand glide. Don't you know that for $16,000, the second hand ought to act like a damn second hand? For $16,000, that hand ought to jump off the watch and give you high five when your team make the damn basket. <laughs> 16. For sixteen thousand dollars, if your woman mad at you and you think it's gonna be a hard night, <laughs> that second hand should jump off, grab the lotion, and tell you you're gonna be all right tonight <laughs> for sixteen thousand dollars. <laughs> So I ended up calling him an ignorant <laughs> and we got into it. He said, how come a brother got to be an ignorant <laughs> every time he try to look good? I said, no, you're misunderstanding. I'm not calling you ignorant because you like to look good. You said you paid $16,000 for that watch. Stand your ignorant ass right here and watch me. Excuse me, bro, can you tell me what time you have? 10.35, didn't cost me a damn nickel. <laughs> That would be why you are ignorant. <laughs> that is wow. comic Adele Givens. Coming up, we got the People's Movie Critic for you. It's Bob and Sherry. Welcome to the Bob and Sherry store. You can stock up for summer with deals down every aisle. With Bob and Sherry swag you can use, including a really big 24-ounce Bob and Sherry latte mug, plus Bob and Sherry travel mugs and H2O Go bottles, plus our brand new Mother of All Mothers line with oversized teas, candles, enormous tote bags, and more. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. Oh, wait a mile for the Off-Air Podcast, the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. Oddcast. Download on the free Bob and Sherry app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Bob and Sherry. Are you grilling your burgers correctly? You probably are not. I know I am not from what I just read, but we'll tell you how to avoid those mistakes in just a minute. But just before that, I was online, and I love this. I saw uh, four pictures of the same young lady, really cute young lady. And in the first uh, frame, she says, when we're young, we sneak out of our house. And the second one, to go to parties. And the third one, but when we're old, we sneak out of parties 
to go to our house. <laughs> That's so true. That is so true. I have I have been at parties with you and a guy named Larry who will go unmentioned beyond that. And we see each other at some big party, and I knew what he was doing. He was looking for an escape route out the back so he could easily leave. Yeah, I don't know what that mm. says about us. But anyway, you are who you are, right? All right, grilling uh, grilling burgers. Everybody's doing it if you're not a vegetarian this time of the year. And it's very easy to not do it well. Um, I've got a suggestion on things you should avoid. And I forget where I found this. But anyway, here we go. Um, encouraging flare-ups. It's fun to get a little flame going on the grill, you know, but it actually causes more harm when it comes to a burger. It can leave a burger burnt on the outside and not cooked on the inside. So as much as we love flames, guys, that's not a good idea. Sticky meat. Due to the high protein in beef burgers, the meat has a tendency to want to stick to the grill. You should never have to struggle to pull a burger out of a uh, off of a grill to avoid this patch your patties dry and i never thought of doing this apply a tiny amount of canola oil before letting it hit the grill i've never thought of putting any kind of oil to make it um less sticky have you i brush mine I brush mine with olive oil and I also embed a small ice cube right in the center of the burger. And as the burger cooks, the ice cube melts and releases steam and it helps keep it from drying out. I read that on some cooking website years ago and it really does work. Okay, well, I'm done. I'm done. It's over to you because I got nothing after an ice cube and a side of a burger. I mean, Holy you've never, moly. you've never seen that. Like it's a little no. um, a food hack. Yeah. Like you no. put it and not a big ice cube, you know, you get like a piece of ice and you embed it inside the burger and, and there and you go. And it keeps it moist. It helps. Yeah. I mean, you want, huh. you also don't want to be constantly pressing down on the, the poor thing no. while it's cooking. Yeah. Or you don't, you don't want to do what my father's cook, Sal Balaccino used to do. I used to see him doing this in the restaurant. He'd have not so much a burger, but a steak. And he puts, he'd take his index finger and he'd press it into the steak. And then he put it in his mouth to see how done it was. But yeah, you know, that's know. actually like one way to tell how meat is done. I'm really bad at this because I never trust it. Like um, the different the different parts of your hand, the way yeah. that pressure feels tells you how the meat is done. I saw that on like Bobby Flay or something and I try it, but I don't trust it. I use a meat thermometer for everything because I don't well, trust that uh, hand thing. Um, well, Sal Balcino wasn't. He was uh, putting his finger in the meat and then putting it in his mouth. And of course, there'd be other steaks along the way he'd have to cook. So, you know. Maybe not a great idea. I, I cook hamburgers in two different restaurants at the Roy Rogers, where I had to say, Howdy, partner, may I take your order? I cook burgers. And then I did at the Irish Jewish restaurant that I cooked at, the O'Brien Steins. And I know that sounds like a bit, but it really was real. Burgers took the longest thing to make of anything. And really? if something happened that the burger yeah. fell, you you didn't get another burger on there. We would just have one guy stand in the way so nobody could look in and see what we were doing and pick the burger up and brush it and brush it <laughs> oh, off no. and stick it on the bun. Yeah. I know that happy what you trails, want to hear. partner. <laughs> no. Happy trails, partner. I know yeah. that's not what you want to hear, but we had big thick burgers and they just took so long. Yeah, and those people are probably still fine. Yeah, like they're uh, not sure they are. Yeah. Oversalting. Don't oversalt. Remember that salt is very good at drawing up moisture, so that's not good for a burger. Keep it cool. If you're a fan of having uh, rare or medium rare burgers, then you should avoid uh, getting uh, to room temperature with the burger before cooking. If you want it to have a crunchy outside, make the burger nice and thick. Uh, don't rest the burger like you do some meats. They're better just very hot. And I think this is one of the most important and overlooked things. Spend a little bit more money and get some really good hamburger buns. It just makes a difference. Here you got this meat you spent all this money on. You get some hamburger bun that just has no taste at all. Get a potato bun or something like that. So there you are. I love, I love your bold and fearless willingness to take a Thank stand. You. You know, That's right. to take a literal, in this case, on hamburger buns, but you're not afraid of criticism. You're not afraid of somebody saying, hey, Bob, oh. could you be more freaking no. bougie? No, you're out there <laughs> all alone in the field saying, do not That's eat right. an inferior bun. And I uh, admire well, you, you know, for that. 
I do. Judge me if you want, but I'm right. Okay, so that's it. People, right there. People's Movie Critic is next because it's Friday. It's Bob yeah. and Sherry. Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text movie to 888 Bob Sherry. It is time now for the People's Movie Critic and his review of The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Hey, Lamar. Hey, y- you know, y'all know this, and I'm sure y'all agree with me. I love Ryan Reynolds. Oh, and yeah. I really enjoyed the first Hitman's Bodyguard, but I wasn't sure how the sequel would turn out. Uh, I expected it to get bad reviews, and it did. But as talented as Ryan Reynolds is, I wanted to give him a chance. Plus, Morgan Freeman is in it, so that's a huge bonus. Now, the plot is very loose, but let's be honest. We're showing up to see Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson going back and forth with each other while Salma Hayek, Salma Hayek is acting crazy and teaching us new cuss words, which she did come up with a few I've never heard. Can't share them right now because we wouldn't be on the air. But it, it, it's, it's, it's really, if that's why you're coming, then you're not going to be disappointed. Go ahead and buy the ticket. Just like any good action movie, you have to have a really good bad guy. And in this movie, Antonio Banderas is your man. This is a big cast. This is a really first class cast for a movie that sounds, I could, it was confusing in the title. Is it a Vin Diesel movie? Is it a Kevin (laughs) Costner movie? I mean, it's crazy title. Go ahead. Yeah, but they got the talent. You're right. And uh, Antonio Banderas is, he's the bad guy. And he comes across like an over the top Bond villain being very evil but witty at the same time, handsome, and with that melodic Spanish accent, even though he's supposed to be Italian. And his wardrobe is over the top, as is his hair and the spray tan. I mean, he is awesome. (laughs) Now, the movie opens up with bodyguard Michael Bryce, who's played by Reynolds. He's in a therapy session, and he's taking a sabbatical from guarding people and touching guns because that last thing was such a disaster. They threw him out of the hitman's or I mean the uh, bodyguard organization and all of that. So when hitman Darius Kincaid, who's played by Jackson, is kidnapped, his wife Sonia, uh, played by Sam Hyke, she drags Michael with her to save him. And her goal is to get to their honeymoon because they've just gotten married so that they can make a baby. She wants to be a mom. So the bad guy, Aristotle Papadopoulos, the Greek autocrat, which is played by Antonio (laughs) Banderas, he's making this huge diamond drill bit that will open up something in the bottom of the sea that will ruin the economy of every other nation but Greece so that they make time for their rightful, you know, their their place is world power. They want to be the world power. So for some unexplicable reason, the government agents decide to do to take a known hitman, a failed bodyguard, and a con woman, and they would be the best people to stop this from happening. So the <laughs> plot is don't even think about it. Don't get sidetracked by trying to figure it out. Just enjoy the action and the dialogue, because that's what we're here for. You know, nobody respects the FBI anymore. You know, you got no. to <laughs> yes, yes, Exactly. Now, yeah. the, the movie's an hour and 40 minutes. It's rated R for action and violence, and a very, very strong R for the language, because it is over the top. The physical comedy that Reynolds' character goes through has to be tough on the stuntman. He's thrown through walls, through windshields. He's run over by cars numerous times. And all of this is done with that beautiful background of of Greece and sometimes Italy and and different places. Uh, The chemistry between the three main characters is really good. And according to the director, there was a lot of improvisation with with the three of them. Now, once it got started, what he did was he just let them roll with it. And then they would cut it back to what they wanted to use. And a good portion of the dialogue, there's no way it could have been written. It had to come from the heat of the moment. You could just tell they were riffing off, and it it works. It really does. If you love the first one, you'll really like this one. Even though there's nothing new, it's pretty much, you know, just more of the same. But my score on it is three buds. But I'm only going to three, down to three, because although it is good, it is more of the same. So, So it's a sequel. But it's well worth watching because Ryan Reynolds is just great. He is just great. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Um, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, for a living, murders people. But he's a likable character. Yes, yes, yes. You love him to death. Love him to death. Okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) 
kind of like you with Tony Soprano, right? Yes. Yeah, it must yes. be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. must be. All right, so three buds, but, you know, Lamar, honestly, I would watch Ryan Reynolds' aviation gin commercials for two hours, so I'm definitely the target audience for this. More with the People's Movie Critics straight ahead. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. We are back now with the People's Movie Critic, who very much enjoyed the hitman's wife's bodyguard, three buds worth. And how did Father's Day go for you, Lamar? Did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend, but Father's Day in its own right did not go exactly my way. Now, I have been wanting a Blackstone griddle. It's an outdoor griddle that you cook on. And I've been wanting one for quite a while. So Carla decides that maybe we will make that a combo between my birthday and Father's Day. I can get the griddle. Okay, great. So a couple of different opportunities, I had to get the griddle. And she said, well, you know, it's, well, why don't we wait for Father's Day and, and, and birthday? Okay, okay. I I'll haven't heard the word griddle in a long... Did you get this from the John Denver estate? No, okay. no. This is the, a, this is the number griddle. one selling thing. Oh, no, no. This is big time. This is big time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so there's actually one that Walmart had them make and it's the only place you can get it. And it's got all the stuff you're looking for. And so we sort of going back and forth on this. And so in the middle of it, she mentions that, well, you know, it's really hard to surprise you. So I go, okay, that's my key to shut up because the griddle's going to show up. So we went <laughs> on our trip for my birthday uh, and we got back and I'm thinking, okay, when we get back, somebody's going to have brought the griddle over to the house. So we come bouncing into the house and, I go out to the porch and there's no griddle. I go out to the in the garage and there's no griddle. So I don't want to say anything. I'm like, okay, okay, all right. She's waiting on this, and so we go out to do some more shopping. And she says, "Is this the griddle you're talking about?" I said, "Well, yeah, that is the griddle I'm talking about." You know, and, and so I don't want to say anything because I don't want to ruin the surprise. So all of a sudden, you can't find these things around here. Well, I look online and I'm searching them. There's seven of them in center Alabama, which is where we're going Father's Day weekend. So I mentioned to Carlos, you know, these things are everywhere. They're gone, but there's like seven of them in center. She goes, oh, that's okay. So I'm thinking, she's going to call Looney. Looney's going to get the griddle, and it's going to be there. So we get to center Alabama. I spend all weekend looking for this griddle. Oh, no. I'm looking for the griddle. Where is the griddle? What are we doing about the griddle? So Alex, our, my daughter Alex and her husband Eric, they're at the thing, and so they give me a gift, and it's one of those uh, cast iron things that you put on top of meat to hold it down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. A weight, yeah. you know? She said, we got you that. And Carla goes, yeah, that'll be great with your griddle. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, okay. No griddle. Still no griddle. <laughs> I'm standing. I'm talking to you right now. There's no griddle in my future because if you go on Walmart online – they're completely sold out. There's none. And this is the middle of the summer. They're not going to get any more in. I will never get the griddle. I will never what get the griddle. What happened to all the griddles in center Alabama? They were all gone, evidently. And evidently, oh. she didn't tell nobody to buy one. I mean, oh, there's yeah. none nowhere. There's, I've searched Walmart all across the country. There's, they've, been, they've taken it off the website. Have you, have you tried eBay? Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're like gold on so, eBay. I don't know what the deal is on that. So, Lamar, what's the sadism behind, oh, that'll go great, great with your griddle, the griddle that no one is giving you? <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like she's expecting me to, you're, you're going to get the griddle, aren't you? Well, I don't know, am I? Because every time I go to buy <laughs> one, you say you're hard to surprise. And see, this is why I am hard to buy for because my experience has been, if you want something, go get go it. Go get it. Go yeah. get it. Don't wait. Don't yeah. wait for somebody to get it for you. It's I mean, true. Oh, my gosh. I can't, I can't even. This is my most frustrating Father's Day ever. Because I would have just bought the griddle a month ago if somebody had let me buy it. But... Wait, so, so they, all, they all are talking a good griddle game. Yes. And they're all acting like there's a griddle. Yes. But yes. there's no griddle. And there's no so what, for what did you get Ex except for that weight for the uh, meat <laughs> on the grill? What did you get? I got a really nice card from Carla. <laughs> well, because she thoughtful. says she says because yeah. you're 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 going to get a griddle. Well, 
Well, somebody's got to go buy it. Walmart's not bringing it to me. I mean, <laughs> what we're doing here. You know what you so, should do, Lamar? You should take a page out of Bob's book. After work tonight, you should come home, put on your Kiss the Cook apron, take that beautiful Father's Day card outside, and try to cook a steak on it. <laughs> yeah, send a message. Send a message. That always works out well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Bob sorry, is the man. master. So, so, so has Walmart made any statement that, you know, they're back to order, they're going to produce some more, no, maybe no, you'll no, get no, it for no. Christmas? They did have that up online. They said they would let you know. Now they've pulled that off. They're not going to – no, they're sold out. Mm. They're done. There's no griddle. No griddle. No griddle you on ain't Amazon? No griddle. You. Uh, on Amazon? No, not this one. I mean, I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for it. I mean, this was a nice one. This is all I needed. I mean, so simple. They're gonna make so more no if, if they're yeah. selling. It's just back to order. You can, you're gonna get it for Christmas now. Yeah. You better get her on there it right go. away. It's too cold yeah. to go outside to cook the griddle at Christmas. Well, it's, it's not cold all year round. You know, Lamar, you go- there's always something with you, isn't there? There's always something with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. You go. That hurts coming from you, Bob. <laughs> you get on out there and you slap a piece of meat on that Hallmark card and let's see what happens. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Three buds for the hitman's wife's bodyguard. It's Bob and Sherry. Bob and Sherry sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. Earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Here's Bob and Sherry. It is talk back time on the Bob and Sherry show. You can text us at 888-262-7437. You can call us at 888-B-O-B-S-H-E-R-I. You can download our free app, tap the microphone at the bottom of the screen and just talk. And of course, you can go old school and email us at bobandsherry.com or DM us on any of the socials. This is not a let's all pile on Bob thing, but don't. And, and speaking about flags and the different types of flags you can hang out in your front yard like you know me personally i love gnomes so i've got like a little gnomes summertime gnomes hanging on a flag out in my front yard don't don't you wear like tiny little lobsters on your pants <laughs> why are you hating on whimsical cute little flags being hung out in your yard what does it matter if it's christmas or if it's thanksgiving or or whatnot <sighs> I don't get you, but don't worry. I still love you for who you are. Love you, Sherry. <laughs> was well, I married I think to her at know. one time? <laughs> I think I was. Um, I, I, I think there's a difference between um, your pants and a flag. Okay. I just, I just want to point that out. All right. So, I get the whimsy in both, and I do have shorts that have little lobsters on them. But I got them before they were really popular. I got them a long time ago. I was kind of a trailblazer in in the lobster on the pants thing. It doesn't matter. How come you're allowed to advertise your whimsy on your pants, but other people can't advertise their whimsy off their front porch? That's her question. Like, Why is it that you're judgy of one and not the other? Okay, so I don't have a really solid answer to that question, so I'm 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 going to go with the truth and uh, how I see it, okay? And I I see that lobsters on my pants are cooler than a turkey on a flag. But can you say why you you hold this view? Because I am wearing my pants. Oh, so it, because it's on you, like, okay, how would you feel about a person wearing turkeys on their pants? Or are you only okay with certain kinds of whimsical things that are pre-approved by you? And you can be honest here. I mean, if the truth is, is that you are the decider of what is allowed to be whimsical on a person, just go ahead and own that. Admit that. Uh, I think I will. What kind of a Mama Luke would wear turkeys on his pants? You know, you, you the guys the guys looking to to meet someone. He's a single guy. He walks into the uh, he walks into the bar, eating outside. You know, drinking outside. It's the summertime. He's got shorts on. He's got turkeys on his pants. Women are not going to like that. Lobsters. That says you know he might be fun. That's a really cool thing to uh, enjoy once in a while. Look at lobsters, seafood, summer. Yeah, it's just cooler. So it's taste. So it ba- comes down to so it comes down to taste. And yours is the best, and that's basically your position here, is that it's, you uh, will decide 
you will decide what other what is best for everyone. Go ahead. And I, it. I I just think sometimes the the, uh, the seasonal flags look okay, and sometimes they look just kind of cheesy. I can think of so many awesome, funny icebreaker lines for a guy that walks in wearing a pair of pants with turkeys on them. That it it just that like it does itself. It does. You know? Yeah. I mean, you oh, can I see can it think right of now. one. Yeah. I can, yeah. I mean, right off the top of your head, you can come up with a bunch. And that's yeah. not, that's before we even get into stuffing. I mean, we're just strictly sticking. <laughs> with food, right. <laughs> like I can go all day with this. So I, I think that it's just, first of all, I like people that, that are whimsical and don't take themselves too seriously. And there are some like whimsical flags that make you smile, you know, sunflowers, pugs, whatever. But you're just so, and you're so hesitant to say, look, I just like what I like, and I want people to do the things that I like. And if they're doing something that I don't like, then I want them to stop. I like flags. Don't get me wrong. If there, ha- if there are cool flags, a state flag, North Carolina has a cool state flag. Uh, California has a cool state flag. You know, I, I like that. But, you know, a little small flag that has brown leaves on it, I know it's October. Okay. I mean, <laughs> don't you, don't you look at these people as, you know, they're just making an effort to celebrate. And doesn't that make that's life fine? Doesn't that make I'm not life, knocking on their door? I'm not make, knocking on their door and saying, hey, take down the squirrel flag. I don't do that. When people do that to me, it's made my life just a smidge better. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, here's a thought. Whatever you do, don't get a wild hair and run for the homeowner's board because you would be an absolute terror. I would like that. I would, ver- I would very much like that. I, I would know like you that. would. Mm-hmm. It, it's Bob and Sherry. All of us at the Bob and Sherry Show would like to thank you. Thanks for helping us in this crazy past year as we recognize together healthcare heroes, essential workers, first responders, and thanks for your help finding those who have struggled in the pandemic with the Fill the Fridge promotion. Mostly, we'd like to thank you for sticking with us during this time and look forward with you to brighter times on the horizon. From the Bob and Sherry Show. The Bob and Sherry website, the oddcast, contest info, bobandsherry.com. So we've got to bring Max on right now. If you're a regular listener, you know that every once in a while, he will read from his spam box on his computer, and he gets some really interesting women who want to be a part of Max's life. What's going on? Um, so <clears throat> I will read these out to you. Uh, this one is from Miss Anna. And so uh, she's, the subject is, how is life, my beneficial, my cupcake, smiley face? <laughs> my snookums, where are you from? How old are you? How is life? At the moment, I am searching for adroit man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an adroit man. Although, let me just say, Bob is the beneficial. <laughs> Bob, you're the adroit cupcake. Bob is the yeah. beneficial. Um, this next one is uh, from Miss Mia. Salutation, my precious Sir Choice. I hope you're able to listen to this. I hope you're able to hideous small talk. <laughs> wait, wait. Max. All small you... talk is hideous. <laughs> Max. You must now be known as Sir Choice. <laughs> When was the last time you heard anyone say, salutations? <laughs> um, then she says, amusing Mr. Inimitable greeting. How do you like today? Let's tense talk. Let me just say, the tense talk comes after you've been together for a few years. That's right. Yeah, it's too early for that. Where do you stay now? Today, <laughs> I'm not looking for corking, not young buddy. I she's am. not looking. Wait. I'm sorry. She's not looking for what? What? Corking. Corking. Mm. I, I don't know what that means. I, I don't think uh, it's dirty. I do. Not really? looking for corking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Sir Choice, I think you might be wrong. Not I think looking you're wrong. for corking, I, young buddy. She later yeah. says, I am unsurpassable. 
Might want to rethink That's... that corking. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say she's dreaming of the corking. All right, this next one is um, from Miss Ida. It says, Bonjourno, my I hope you can disgusting speak. <laughs> oh, you know what that Once means. Once again, may yeah. you tell you what, you, you, at, you attract a certain Just type of to this. woman. Yeah. May you grotesque talk with me. Mm. Whoa. Grotesque talk. Whoa. Whoa. Then she says, my mister, my unsurpassed. I am untarnished woman. At this moment, I am seeking tidy mail. Well, <laughs> you know what? You should respond. You should respond. Uh, here is your disgusting talk. Have you liked caulking? Corking? Have you liked? Uh, this one. Hey, this one, the subject line says, Hey, my smiley face, how come, question mark? My wow. one and only Mr. Wealthy. Ooh, uh-uh. How are you? Where do you stay now? She doesn't want to know where I stayed before. She wants to know where I stay now. Isn't it funny that she's asking, where do you stay rather than where do you live? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I know whoever. What's this country, do you think? Is it is it a uh, a former Russian satellite country? You know what this is, to me, this sounds like somebody has written something and then put it through a translator. Yeah. 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 Um, anyhow, <clears throat> soon I am speaking warm, not young buddy. Hmm. I was more comfortable with the hideous yeah, small I was talk. Too. Yeah, I yeah, I know. That's um, getting hello. a little personal. Hello, I hope you can chat my clear soundly. Could I ask you a question? Where are you right now? Huh. <laughs> wow. What's ashamed talk? <laughs> can, I, can I just say, I've been ashamed of things that I've said, but I've never gone in with the let's ashamed talk. Do you think that the, that a shame talk in the other one, she's talking about, you know, just kind of risque talk yeah. back and forth? Yeah, of sure, course. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure that I that's, think what, that's it what it is. Yeah, um, wow. Here we go. Uh, Everybody's got the internet. <laughs> this is from Miss Lisa. Salutation again with that. I hope you are attentive. <laughs> well, apparently I'm not. <laughs> Based on past experience, I'm not attentive. Uh, <laughs> wish to small talk my Mr. Lively. Good evening, my goodish. I hope you can I'm, speak. Oh, I can. Grotesque talk. I, I'm going to go with calling Max Mr. Lively rather than the other one. <laughs> then Sir Choice. <laughs> then for, Sir Choice. For now, yeah. I You am, know what? You know what? Um, that is very attainable, though, to be goodish. You're yes. not great. You're not fantastic. Goodish. You're not bad. You're goodish. Yeah. I am I looking like for benign buddy. Well, that's me. Benign buddy. And uh, and that's it. That's all of them. Um, benign buddy is not a good handle for you to have. I think it's uh, what was the first one, sir? What? Sir choice. Sir choice. Sir, sir yeah. choice. My yeah. dependable. Sir choice and the hideous small talk is my favorite. Right. I, Where do you think that's from? Which country do you think that's from? Uh, it's Ukraine is one that w the one that keeps yeah. on coming up. So That's what it sounds like, yeah. That's what it sounds and like. And this is as close to Ukrainian music as I could get. So just so you know. <laughs> hey, you listen, have no apologies. You, hey, listen, Sir Choice, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> there are people that don't get any of these come-ons in their spam folder, okay? That's right. All right. That's right. Those ladies love you. Straight ahead, the actual elephant in the room, the ultimate elephant in the room is next. It's Bob and Shay. You read it once. I don't believe that. And then you read it again. I can't believe this. It's Bob and Sherry's. I believe this. Shit. I cannot believe this. Shit. Well, people in Florida are tired of the world giggling at videos of alligators ringing doorbells and swimming in pools and getting into their cars and knocking on front doors and stealing picnic items. This happens every three days in Florida. So to give Florida a break. Let's all go to Thailand now, where a family was <laughs> awakened at 2 o'clock in the morning by the sound of a fully grown bull elephant smashing his head through the wall of their house to eat rice directly from their kitchen. Oh, we my goodness. have video. 
And the elephant, you would you would think that there would be all sorts of noise and commotion. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Nope. The family heard the noise, went out to see what the heck is going on. And there is the wall of their kitchen, which you'll see when you go to our Facebook. And the elephant's gigantic elephant head coming through the wall and his trunk kind of daintily moving around and scooping up rice and eating it. It's amazing. So his head actually went through the wall of the house to get in? Yes, sir, buddy. It absolutely did. Oh my um, you see, when, when you look at it, and I'm going to post this up on our Facebook, what you see is the kitchen counters. Um, you see the kitchen sink and um, the dish drainer and some pots and pans and an enormous hole blown <laughs> through the wall of the kitchen <laughs> and a giant <laughs> elephant head complete with tusks <gasps> eating all wow. sorts of tasty goodness right from their kitchen. Um, and then there's that. some pictures... There's some pictures from the outside, too, of the damage that he did. Um, local wildlife officers said that people cannot keep food out in the kitchen in Thailand mm -hmm. because the smell attracts the elephants. And the mm -hmm. elephant, this this doesn't happen very often, I guess, where the elephant's like, oh, that smells good and just puts its whole head through the side of the house. Um, it's going to be expensive to repair, about $1,500. Um, and the family said that they were they had a great sense of humor about it. Now, I want you to imagine you're awakened from a sound sleep at two o'clock in the morning by an elephant shoving its head through the wall of your house. And that your would be response memorable. is your response is it was kind of funny to see the elephant eating in our kitchen. Have you have you seen the uh, have you seen the video of there are, I think, like five elephants, including a couple of baby elephants. And I don't know where they were traveling. I think it was somewhere in Africa. And they're uh, they're moseying along, and I guess they were tired, and they just lay down in the grass on their sides. I've never seen anything like that before. The little babies next to the great big, I guess, mother elephant, and a couple of other big elephants lying on their sides sleeping. It was the sweetest thing. I saw that, and they when whoever you never you never really see elephants sleeping. I mean, no. we don't have access to them, right? Who, no. They sleep about like you'd expect, like soup. They're big, deep, heavy sleepers. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. I, I, saw, I had the same reaction you did. I was like, so relatable, elephants. I really feel you just like stopping in the middle of what you're doing. Um, you know, back to the elephant whose head went through the wall to get the food. Um, I have to admit, there have been times where if, if, if I didn't get a piece of pizza, my head would have been through the wall of somewhere. I just have to have the pizza when I want the pizza. I can't get enough. Like I have been studying these elephant pictures since yesterday afternoon. Um, mm -hmm. The way that, and when you watch the video, like, you know, elephant trunks are very sensitive and like they're, they're right. they can use them the way you use your hand. The elephant is sorting through what's around the kitchen to find things <laughs> to eat. And with the exception of the giant hole in the side of the house, he right. didn't do any more damage to the kitchen than my daughters would, you know, if they were up in the middle of the night looking for a snack. So yeah, he was yeah. he was extremely mannerly. So we'll post this up on our Facebook and you can go check it out. Gives a whole new definition to the phrase the elephant in the room. In the <laughs> it's room. Bob and, it's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text movie to 888 Bob Sherry. I was talking with one of my best friends. I've known him since we were teenagers. And he told me that uh, about a week ago, he and his wife uh, went to see friends of theirs. Evidently, they do this once every couple of years who live in Long Island and uh, have a very nice house. And I said, oh, well, how is that? He said, we had a great time. We went to all these restaurants. They were kind of hard to get into. But nonetheless, nonetheless, the weather was great. It was in the 70s and sunshine. I said, really, did you go for the weekend? He said, uh, no, we went for, uh, I guess, four days. I went, really? Um, I guess for some people, that's sort of okay. I don't think that I want anyone as a guest for that period of time. I think two days is good for me. <laughs> and I don't want to be somebody's guest for four days because I know me and I know that <laughs> after, after about three days, I'm going to do something stupid like say, hey, do you have any really great pizza places around here? And they'd say, oh, yeah, there's uh, Tony's over there. Okay. 
I'm going to go over there for a while. And, um, and do you want, well, I'll go with, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, um, I'm fine. I'll just, can I bring you something? I, I just think that I would need to be alone in my own space after a couple of days. Does that make me weird? No, but it is awkward when you're staying at somebody else's house and you need some alone time. It's like you'll totally... say something. Yeah, you'll say something like that. Uh, that park over there, those trails. I think I'm going to go for a little walk. Oh, I'll come with you. I know oh. that's what they do because, and they're being okay. nice because they don't want you to, you know, get a feel alone, ignored. They're the hosts. It's okay. Just, you know, when people come and stay with Mary and me, I, I will say, you know, whatever you want to do, if you two want to go off, that's fine. If you want us to come, that's fine. I think you give them the option to do it. Because you, you give them the option because you want the option, but a lot of people aren't oh. like you or me and they, oh, I know. they, di they didn't drive to Birmingham to visit grandma to go off on their own. They no. want that. 100% family time, and that is not you. Well, it's me for a while. I mean, I can take a couple of days of it, but after a while, and we're doing everything together, I maybe that is me. It's just the way I was brought up. We were not close to uh, family members. I'm not used to it. I don't know. It just seems I like that, that old thing. After three days, you know, fish and guests go bad. See, I think it does have a lot to do with the way you're brought up. When I go, when I take the girls and we go to Camp Woodbury, which is our name for my brother's house, because it's it's a wild environment always, uh -huh. no matter what's going on. When we go to Camp Woodbury, we are 100% immersed in Camp Woodbury the entire time we're there. Nobody's separated. Nobody's alone. It's constant, constant, constant for the entire time. You would go insane. Well, I don't have any relatives like that. I don't. I mean, um, my brother and I are, are close, but uh, he wouldn't want to spend three or four days with me. And my sister, I think pretty much the same thing. They've got their own thing going. So I'm not used to it. Um, the my, idea first husband, that mm -hmm. my first husband was not, um, he couldn't handle Camp Woodbury. He just, he couldn't handle it. And so we're up there and we're at like day three at Camp Woodbury of a four day, coincidentally, four day long weekend. Day three, he decides that he needs to just go out and ride around a little bit. And he comes back with um, like a Burger King bag. And my brother and his wife look at this like, you have insulted our hospitality. Like they're <laughs> yeah. really great cooks and, and all they right. want to do is feed you. But as you remember, the corn dog couldn't get enough fast food. So yeah. the next day rolls around and it is um, a big holiday. And my brother and his wife have cooked and cooked and cooked in a big holiday. And it's coming up time to like get ready to eat dinner. And my sister-in-law says to my first husband, uh, corn dog, um, I don't know if you like whatever, blah, blah, blah. But that's I made that. And my brother said, Nance, just put it in a paper bag and hand it through the kitchen window and let him get it in the driveway. He'll eat anything he gets that way. <laughs> Your so, brother is so funny. He is. So I feel you, dog. But you just have to know that when you go to when you are invited to someone's house and you you need to get away after two days. Um, they will like talk about you and possibly make fun of you right to your face. I know that. And when I used to, with the ex, we go to see uh, her parents and they're lovely people and they had the most beautiful home I've ever been in. And it was enormous. And we had our own bedroom and it was just, it was fantastic. But like after three days, I just had to get away. And um, I, I looked at the landscape and I didn't see Jack. And I said, um, I'm just going to go wash my, get my car washed. I saw a car wash and off I went. I got it washed fast. And then I went into Ruby Tuesdays and sat and had a cold beer. And while I, I couldn't even enjoy it because if for some reason somebody noticed my car and came in and saw me at the bar alone drinking a beer, they would go back that, and report. Mm -mm, yeah. Bob, Bob is over at Ruby Tuesdays drinking alone. I mean, that would not be good. You would have been your all of your happiness of, at yeah. escaping would yeah. have been ruined for the next ten years. Totally, ten years. Yeah. So it's mm. it's not even worth escaping when it's that's not. the price that you might pay.
You have it's to. Bob and Sherry. The Bob and Sherry website. The Oddcast. Contest info. BobandSherry.com. Here on the Bob and Sherry show, like in the room right now, um, Bob has children. I have children. Max has no children. Doc has no children. So we're evenly divided between people with kids and people without kids. And they, they took a look at um, life satisfaction for people with and without kids at Michigan State. And here's what they found out. People who do not have children, are every bit as happy and satisfied with their life as people who do. And that's good news because more and more people are choosing not to have children in part because they're just so expensive. Um, it, it's just so costly to raise a family. So they looked at it and said, you know, you're child free. Um, you chose not to have kids. And then there are people who are not yet parents, people who are planning to have kids, but don't have them yet. And then there are childless people who would have liked to have had children, but for a variety of reasons and circumstances, it didn't happen for them. So these are the three different kinds of people okay. that, that don't have children. And bottom line, every single one of them was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm really fine. Um, and, and I'm content with my life and I'm happy with it. And I have relationships with my parents and siblings um, who have kids and everything's good. And the, the interesting thing that came out of Michigan State was they were really surprised at how many people don't have children and don't want to ever have children. It was like one in four of the people that they looked at. Really? I wonder yes. if that's a new, a new number just based is, on what's going on. It is. So um, there's a, 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 a social platform called Mumsnet. It, mm -hmm. it, it's like kind of like um, um, it's an, it's a parenting platform, but you can be anonymous on it. So you can, you can get advice or you can talk about things that, you know, you might be criticized for otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so a bunch of parents went onto this platform and said, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have kids. And wow. I feel like, yeah, I feel like this is a taboo topic and that, you know, you get really criticized for this. Um, and so what, what are your thoughts? If you're, if you're a parent of children, if you could go back in time, would you not have kids? And the people that answered, yeah, if I could go back, I wouldn't have them. Um, some of the answers were, um, these kids have aged me. <laughs> like, I am just, <laughs> I'm sure I am aged. Um, uh, other people said that, I love my kids, but I see the lifestyle that my friends who don't have kids have. And I'll be honest, I'm really jealous. Their houses are always clean and quiet. They go on vacations. They they go out to dinner. They have nice cars because they have disposable income that, you know, that you don't have when sure. you're kids. Mm -hmm. um, another person said, I love my children so much. They bring so much joy and love into my life. But if I get reincarnated, I'm not doing it because I want to have an amazing child-free lifestyle. And just it's, it's just so interesting to see people be so brutally honest, you know? You know, um, I think for a lot of people, though, when they're asked that question, they just feel if they say, yes, I would like to not have children if I could do it all over again, th they almost feel like it's sinful to say that because they have been blessed with children you know, not everybody can have them and you have them and you're, you know, continuing your lineage and all that you don't, you just don't, even if you feel that way, you don't want to answer that way, which makes it sound like that's what my choice would be. And it actually wouldn't be. I mean, I thought, and we've kidded about this over the years that, uh, you know, when I was 14, I was going to move to Southern California and possibly uh, move in with Hugh Hefner in the Playboy Mansion uh, in some capacity. But... Kids, al although I've had tragedy in my life, uh, have been a constant. I've really enjoyed them. And here I am, you know, with two kids that just came back, my stepchildren for the summer. And, and I enjoy them. I get the whole thing about not wanting them for various reasons. Because I just read an article about this. I don't even know if we discussed it on the air. People were very, very honest in this uh, posting about, why they didn't have children by choice. And some of them were saying, I'm selfish. <laughs> and I know I'm selfish. I want to do what I want to do. I want to spend my money on myself when I want to buy something. 
And I just don't want the responsibility or the aggravation along with it. I get it. And yet, I, and yet there, are, there are married people, and you know there are, who see a couple like that who have chosen not to have children. And they, and they say to each other as a couple, you know, they seem sad, don't they? I mean, they, they, do. well, they, seem, they seem so sad. Let the word go out. They're not sad at all. They're perfectly a okay about it. They're they, especially the people that chose, deliberately chose to not have children of their own. They oh are yeah, in the article that, in the article that I read, they were very very um, happy, and, and compared to uh, compared to parents, they they were happier as people. My father, um, after my parents split up and we were living with my grandmother, when my father was around and would join the family for dinner, he would, uh, we, he ate different things than the rest of us. Like there was his food and there was everybody else's food. Yeah. Um, and his food was better, you know, and sometimes he'd lean back in his chair and he'd get kind of philosophical and he'd say stuff like, I'll tell you the life I could have had if I didn't have you three. Which is which is wonderful to say to your offspring. It's it is. It's a beautiful oh. thought. So yeah, so um, don't don't be feeling sorry for people that choose not to have kids. Don't judge them. They're they made their decision and they're good with it. They're it's good with Bob it, yeah. and Sherry. Ways to get in touch with the Bob and Sherry Show. Stick your head out a window and yell, "Hey, Bob and Sherry!" Hey, Bob and Sherry! Get the Bob and Sherry free app for your phone and leave us a talkback message. Hey, Bob and Sherry! Email us through the Bob and Sherry website, bobandsherry.com, or email us hello at bobandsherry.com. Call or text us at one eight 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 Bob Sherry. Hello, Bob and Sherry. Leave us a DM on the Bob and Sherry Facebook page, or you can just kick it old school and yell out the window. Hey! Jerry! Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text movie to 888 Bob Sherry. I'm not going to cry or get all into my feelings or blah, 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 but um, it hit me. It hit me last night that this Sunday will be the last time I see my daughter dance on stage. It's her last oh. performance in a national competition. Mm-hmm. And you know, once a dancer, always a dancer. Um, there's no plan. Karami's not planning. Well, that's been to my like, life philosophy. Yeah. Well, th- she's, she's not planning to audition for like dance team in college or anything. Karami is uh-huh. ready to focus on other things. So while there will always be dancing, and trust me, if you invite, the joke in our family is, is um, everybody's doing pretty good at the wedding reception until Karamia decides to take the dance floor. And then everyone suddenly realizes they don't know how to dance. They were just moving (laughs) around. Right. (laughs) So there will be dancing, but Sunday, Uh, um, Karamia has four dances on Sunday. mm -hmm. And when that last dance ends, that's it. That'll be the last time I watch my daughter perform on stage. Something that started when Karamia was a toddler. You know, I bet a lot of parents also, I'm I'm going to not say dads, because I think moms would be just as involved, probably feel the same way when their kid started playing baseball uh, yeah. you know, at the age of nine, uh, throwing the ball with, uh, you know, your kid behind the house. And then he or she gets into Little League and then maybe even into uh, college playing ball. And then there's that one day, unless they call, get called up to the majors when the Uniform is put away and the glove is put somewhere that may or may not make it into the attic. I I will say that I'm glad that I know that this is the last. And here's why. Um, Over the years, competitive dance, like any traveling sport, is very difficult for kids to stick with because it it's their whole life. Right. There's no room for anything else. When Karamia mm-hmm. was younger, there were there were no sleepovers uh, during dance season. Everything was dance um, practices every night. It, it eats your life. And you know that if you have a kid who's mm-hmm. in traveling soccer or baseball, look at our former producer, Todd, like baseball was his kid's whole life. Right. Mm-hmm. So not everybody sticks with it because it really is a sacrifice. And I have watched over the years. Um, kids come through the studio and the competition program who stuck with it for a while. And then they were just like, I just want to be a regular teenager or I just want to be able to do things with my friends. And they, they fell out. And those parents didn't know 
when they were in the audience that they were seeing it for the last time because you just didn't know. That's so true. I'm very, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm super grateful that I know that Sunday afternoon, that'll be the last time. And I will cry because that's just what I do. I'll have my tears in that moment, but I'll have the joy of knowing that um, I, my kid picked something and followed it all the way through. And I'll have that that last time to cherish and hang on to. So it's just and you'll have the joy of knowing you don't have to drive anymore. Oh, not it, Bob. It's not even the driving. Like the, it's the money. Mm. It is the expense. Um, a weird thing happened that I never thought would happen. I, I never thought about it. You know, so many things in your life that you just don't ever think, oh, that's going to happen next. So in the last two weeks, I have unsubscribed from all sorts of like, email things, email reminders about practice and choreography and, and, and pick your child's school bus transportation plan. And do you want a lunch sure. plan? I've, I've unsubbed from all of those things. And the email came out. Hello, dance families. Remember, if you register now, you'll get a discount on your annual tuition and i looked at that and i went i'm getting the biggest discount of all of my annual tuition <laughs> you got it's a raise one, it's a 100 percent annual discount yeah. on my annual tuition so yeah I'm, I'm super proud of the commitment and the discipline and all the years that karen mia put into it but don't sit next to me on sunday unless you want to get wet it's Bob and Sherry. A shareable taste of the show. The Fun Size Podcast drops every Thursday on the free Bob and Sherry app. It must have been really cool, you know, hundreds of years ago when for some reason you uh, are in the right lineage and you become this conquering emperor and, and your, t your armies are taking over lands everywhere, you know, thousands of miles and you're the big guy. And you can, you can give yourself any name that you want. Like Alexander the Great. You know, he, he's, he's sitting there with his brother or somebody and going, so my name is Alexander. That's not exactly impressive. Um, what, what can I add to it? And his brother says, Alexander the Pushy. No, I don't like that. Say that again and you're dead. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. It's and just a I, lot to live up to, though, isn't well, it? Well, it is. And Alexander the Great, I'm reading about him right now. He named over 70 cities after himself. Alexander the Great. 70 cities. He conquered over 2 million square miles of the Earth's surface by the time he was 30. So naming the cities after himself, he felt he was much deserved. So it would be Alexander the Greatville. or <laughs> Welcome Alexandria. to Alexandria. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, 70 cities named after you. And I'm thinking about that and I'm saying, God, what would I do? You know, because in, in most things like skiing, downhill skiing and golf and, uh, and, and school, I could not call myself Bobby the Great. You know, I've, I, I was okay skiing. I was okay playing golf. At one point, I had a 10 handicap. Usually, it was around 13. I got to these things just just good enough so that if you're with me, I'm not a pain in the butt. <laughs> I, it just just kind of B minus, you know? So, so you are not Alexander the Great. You're Robert the I. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Robert the... Okay. Robert the... The B minus, you know. Robert, it's not what, awful. I mean, doing no, this you with know you what is you could be? The... No, you know what you could be? It's what? perfect. You what? could be Robert. It could be worse. Oh, that's because good. it could always be worse. You're not pillaging. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're not up. You're not coming down and sacking the villages. Right, right. Plus, in the peasant's mind, I planted the seed. It could be worse if I wasn't worse. here. Yeah. That's, so even if you're, that. yeah, even if you're bad, the peasants yeah. are gathered around their small fires and their dirty, filthy hobbles, and they're like, "Oh, we should overthrow the emperor." And then one of them goes, "Yeah, but it could be worse." And then they all go, "Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly." 
You know what? I, I would be Bobby. It could be worse. But you can't respect an emperor named Bobby. I'm sorry. You can't do it. You're going to have to be Robert. Yeah, I guess so. Max, what do you it, think? Is, it, no, it, as a matter of fact, even today, I don't get any respect with the name Bobby. You know, it just... It, you can't be a ferocious emperor who rules over um, yeah. and has dominion over all the lands. If you're named Bobby, that's not yeah. going to work. It has to be Robert. You have to be I Robert. I don't even have dominion over this house I live in. That's because you're Bob. Perhaps if you were Robert, yeah. there, you would strike more fear. In fact, you should announce that at dinner tonight, that you would like to be known henceforth as Robert. It could be worse. They're all going to be here. That is a very good idea. But, Thank you. But I... But I know your family, and one of them's going to say under their breath, could it? Could it, though? Yeah, all right. Could it really, Bobby? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, yeah, a little history lesson for you there. It's Bob and now. Sherry. Congratulations, Sherry Lynch. Named one of the most influential women in radio again this year. It's Bob and Sherry. So as far as being a parent, you were not really big into punishment when one of the girls did something wrong? I mean, I know you would correct them, but did you ever come up with like, uh, I don't know, tasks or something they had to do because they committed a crime? I was a good one for taking their phones away. And, um, you know, there was some grounding, like, you know, um, there would be a period of weeks where, you know, all you were allowed to do was go to school and volleyball or school and dance or whatever but beyond that no i've never hit my kids i've mm. never you know locked them in a dungeon without food <laughs> i've never done any of that stuff <laughs> um i i was very lenient i mean i would if they did some, they, they didn't do much wrong but uh if one of them you know did something wrong had people over when we were out for the night or something you know i, I would speak to them i sometimes wish that i had imposed uh, a little bit more strictness, but um, not as much as some of these comments that I saw in BuzzFeed. People said, this is what happened when we did something wrong. This was our punishment. And I'm just going to read them to you. To see if you, you would do any of these to your kids. The first one is, we lost the snow shovels building snow forts. So our parents made us shovel snow using pots and pans. I'd like to see it. I would like to see it. Um, my best friend and her brother would not stop fighting, and their parents had tried everything, taking away the toys, early bedtime, grounding, all of it. So one day their dad had the idea of putting them in the garage, sitting next to each other while holding hands and literally watching paint dry on a canvas. You know what that, that reminds me of? That the, um, is really sinister. The togetherness shirt. Like when your kids are fighting, you make them, mm-hmm. you put them both into one oversized shirt and make them sit next to each other, you know, and they're sharing the same Did shirt. Did you ever, Have you ever do seen that? that? I've, I've heard of that. I want it to, but they didn't, they didn't start really, they never really fought. They would mm-hmm. just it, be icy to each other. You know, mm-hmm. and, and by the time they started doing that, they were too old to stuff into the friendship shirt. But I was always jealous of people that got to do that because <laughs> the pictures are hilarious. Listen, listen to this one. My parents always made us repair things we broke. One day, my sister and I were roughhousing and we accidentally made a hole in the wall. So my dad drove us to Home Depot and told us to figure out how to fix the hole on our own. We had to talk to the employees ask our own questions, gather the repair items, select the paint color, and then fix the hole on our own. We messed up a lot, but we learned the value of taking care of things, and we got a couple of new skills. I think this is is one of the greatest. This is one of the greatest things I've ever heard, parent It is. I know, I know. It's because they learned something along the way. This one, not so much. If I slammed a door really hard when I was mad, my mom or grandparents, or both, would make me practice closing it nicely. I'd have to open and close it gently about 50 times, (laughs) counting out loud. If I closed it too hard, I would have to start over. 
You know, it sounds, I've never been able to do this kind of stuff because it all sounds crazy to me, but I understand how it worked. Because if you did that one time as a kid, you never slammed the door again, right? No, that's true. You know, I just remembered I had, what was that jar that I had where somebody would get like a, oh, the chip jar. And they, they each, uh, each kid had a chip jar and I would put, I had poker chips. I would put a, uh, a chip in if they did something really good. And if they did something that was, you know, not good or naughty, they would take like two chips out. I got to tell you, um, you have to have both parents really pulling. Yeah. We both, we were both into the chip jar originally. And then one of us, I won't say who just kind of said, eh, it's chip jar. I just, I just can't deal with it anymore. And I think the kids were moving the chips around. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do. Uh, this one, when my brother and I bickered, my parents made us stand side by side with our non-dominant hands free, his right hand, my left hand, and then told us to clean the kitchen while holding hands. <laughs> I'd like to see it, but I would not be capable of doing it. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a coworker whose son was 13 and had all the hallmarks of a sulky teen. Her favorite punishment was making him sit next to her on the couch for several hours while she did all the best mom things, hugging him, making bad jokes, <laughs> just punishing him with love. Is what that Derek, we're going to watch This Is Us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. My parents did none of that stuff. None of it. My father would just get ticked off. That was the punishment, to have to be in the house when the dark cloud was not going to be lifting for who knows how long and may be called back as, as, as six months later, if I've done something wrong. Well, you know, you had the car like what three weeks and then dented the side, right? Yeah. I haven't forgotten it. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. um, something that is very hard to understand if you haven't lived it like my husband does not understand this this is something about me my husband does not and i'm not sure he's ever going to understand mm -hmm. you cannot take a grown-up who was so wildly neglected and abused as a kid and expect them to be a, a really strict authoritarian parent i agree with you i just was not able there were certain ways I wasn't able to be with my own kids because I had so many feelings and memories and I just that is such a I great observation. I just couldn't do it. And um, he never experienced the kind of abuse or neglect or deprivation I did. So my mm -hmm. ways don't make sense to him. It's a thing he's never going to be able to understand. And like you, Bob, I look back and I think there were lots of places and ways and times I should have been stricter. Yeah. But it, it, it wasn't that I wouldn't, it was that I couldn't. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. It was a- You know, a, I am so glad mm. that you brought up this observation. With all the years we've worked together and all the talks we've had about kids and all, and our own upbringing, I have never looked at it that way. And I have, I have thought recently, why didn't you do this with this one? Because it would have turned out better that way. But I think what you just said was right. When you come from a background where there's hysteria, you so don't want that, that you may err on the soft side a little too much. Yeah, because you know, you you hear, you can hear things in your voice that remind you of yeah. the very thing that you were most frightened of as a kid. And yeah. you go, uh -uh, I'm not doing it. I'm that not, so I'm not repeating this. I'm so, so glad you said that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I I have tremendous admiration for these people that, you know, do these wacky, creative mm -hmm. punishments. Like you, I'm over here going, well, that behavior is disappointing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and you know right. what? We both have had our butts kicked a lot for it. A lot. It yeah, is what it is. True. It's Bob and Sherry. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review, and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening.